Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about the 40, 41st year of Dungeons & Dragons history, the year 2014. 2014 is a massively important uh, year in the history of Dungeons & Dragons, and the reason why is it is the launch of Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, all right? Now, this is hugely important because 4th Edition came out in the year 2014. Uh, 2008. And for six years, there was a large question of whether Dungeons & Dragons would be an ongoing concern. Uh, during 2000, Between 2008 and 2014, the Dungeons & Dragons community uh, suffered a sundering of the community, a split of the community, um, debate within the community, disruption within the community, disunity in the community that the game had never seen in the history, right? There had always been a little bit of a ruckus, a little bit of pushback on different versions, but twenty-four, but fourth edition was the first edition where it was very arguable that literally half the players walked away when another game came up to and outsold briefly uh, Dungeons and Dragons, which was Pathfinder made by Paizo. So the fourth edition was some of the was absolutely without a doubt some of the darkest years. That Dungeons and Dragons had ever had ever gone through. Now, a lot of people would say, "Oh, well, the, you know, the really the darkest years of Dungeons and Dragons was back in the, the '80s when there were a lot of people during the Satanic Panic." And I don't think that's the case, right? Because that was an external problem, right? So that was the rest of the world coming in and saying Dungeons and Dragons is bad, right? Well, what that does is that bring you know when when you got a bunch of pastors and uh, other people um, pointing the finger and saying your thing is bad. That's gonna believe it or not. I think that brings unity in your in in your uh, in your community. And I will tell you right now, I think there are absolutely people who miss the days when you know Dungeons and Dragons was a persecuted uh, concern, right? And and uh, not many, but there's a few, right? They tell those those stories fondly, right? And the, and the reality is that's just not the case nowadays, right? Parents have bigger fish to fry than if their kid is playing, is reading 300 pages of rules and, and, and gathering at their kitchen table to play, to tell stories together and roll dice and do math, right? That, that's the, people will figure it out. If that's what your teenager's doing, you really ain't got a, a whole lot of problems. You actually uh, maybe might want to start looking at what scholarships are going to be available, right? <laughs> so, so, you know, where D&D was at one time perceived as a problem, all that's been swept aside. But with fourth edition... That is half of the Dungeons and Dragons community saying Dungeons and Dragons is bad. That is a real problem, right? That is a real problem. That can shut you down, right? That doesn't rally the troops, right? That is a real, real problem. And your dollars are going not to, you know, the owners of Dungeons and Dragons, Wizards of the Coast. Your dollars are going to Paizo. That was not a good situation. Fourth edition are the dark, in my opinion, 2008 to the beginning of 2014 is the darkest years Dungeons and Dragons ever suffered, without a doubt, okay? Bra, 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 bra. A, a slaying champion arrives, right, to slay the disruption and disunity that 4th edition caused. Mike Merles comes in with the best designed version of the game since uh, that was... Mike Merles delivers the best edition of Dungeons and Dragons that was not designed by Gary Gygax, right? Uh, of course, Gary Gygax stands as a higher champion for the game than Mike Merles, but in my opinion, nobody else does. Mike Merles saved the game in 2014 and delivered 5th uh, edition, which is the most, the, which is the edition with the most momentum, right? There are achievements that have, been, that have occurred with 5th edition that have never, ever been matched by any other edition. And the goodwill that the community has for the game, the spreading of the game uh, all over the world, the spreading of the game in America is tremendous. And Mike Merles is responsible for all of that because his design paid perfect homage to, um, to Gary Gygax and to what the game actually is. And at the same time, there is a sprinkling of innovation. Uh, my wife just said something to me. She says, you should splash something with style. You don't drown it in style. 
thought, yeah, that's that's perfect, right? So fifth edition is splashed with innovation. It is not drowning in innovation, right? And I think that's one of the issues is I love fourth edition. I'm going to say that proudly, right? But I do not contest for one moment that the that the addition caused great disunity in the community. That's not even debatable, right? You could debate whether the game was good had good rules or not, but you cannot debate that the that the addition sundered the community. And that is not that you can't allow that to happen. The designer that allowed that to happen was a bad designer, right? And so, you know, that that's very clear, right? Um, and so fifth edition comes in. And Mike Merles arrives on a white horse, you know, with a great sword in hand and slays the disunity of fourth edition and restores the game as an ongoing powerful producer for uh, Wizards of the Coast and for Hasbro and really establishes Dungeons and Dragons as a healthy product again. And you cannot underlook the achievements of Mike Merles. He is the second most important creator in the history of the game, in my opinion. All right, what is the location of for, what is the location for Dungeons and Dragons in the year 2014? Well, it is Takanuchi Pass in Nora, Nora, Japan, right? Now, if you're aware of uh, Japan's interests, Japan, one, has been a longtime supporter of Dungeons and Dragons, and there are thousands of Dungeons and Dragons players in Japan. And much of anime has been impacted, has been highly influenced by Dungeons and Dragons, right? And so, you know, it's really important to understand that that's a very real, uh, that, you know, Japan loves Dungeons and Dragons, period, end of sentence, right? But they have their own interests. And one of their interests, more than anyone else in the world, when it comes to drifting cars, Japan are the absolute kings. And the Drift King, the best drift driver in the world comes from Japan. And where did he learn those skills? Well, he learned them in Takenuchi Pass in North Japan and on other mountainous passes in the, in Japan, right? So Japan has this beautiful relationship with drifting cars, right? With and and also so what does drifting cars have to do with Dungeons and Dragons? Well, it is a completely superfluous, unnecessary, beautiful thing that adds art and beauty to our world. Just like drifting, right? <laughs> so, so Dungeons and Dragons is just like nobody needs this game, right? It is completely cake. It, you know, it's, it's just a wonderful, beautiful, fun. It just adds spice and, and beauty to our lives, right? It's art, right? And that's what drifting is. In Japan, while they understand the art of Dungeons and Dragons, they also understand the art of drifting cars. So Takanuchi Pass is our location for the year 2014. Who is our entity for the year 2014? Well, it is Mackenzie Bezos, right? Mackenzie Bezos is one of the creator, is one of the people who is responsible for the growth and the and the maintenance and the health of Amazon, an absolutely massive commercial concern within the United States of America. So Mackenzie Mackenzie Bezos, uh, she is one of the you know one of the people who was there right at the beginning right and helped to build Amazon into what it was and she uses her power of being connected to this 120 billion dollar industry right like that's just the profits from it right um, that are that are att attached to her right uh, and she uses this to create an organization uh, called bystanders revolution which is an anti-bullying um, uh, concern right and this is really a big deal too in 2014. So when I was ki when I was a kid, when I was 11 years old, I got off the bus, right, and I had said some harsh words to another young to another young student. Um, and so I'm 11 years old. We get off the bus, and I'm not kidding. Five kids gather around me, and I get punched hard in the face. Now I took that punch, and the kid was like, "Okay, you took that punch well." And uh, you ha and you know, and I told the kid, I'm not going to fight you because this isn't going to go well. I got punched just ridiculously hard in the face, and that's not the only time I was beaten down as a child, right? I had multiple fights when I was a kid, right? And I wasn't even, I wasn't even that much of a scrapper, right? I now to tell the truth, I can be annoying to people. By the way, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but um, and so that caused people to fight me physically. Well, all that is pretty much gone today, right? In most public schools and in most private schools, there's a no-touch policy, 
And the reality is, you know, bullying does not look today what it looked like, what it looked like, what it, like, what it used to. Bullying today has moved on to social media, and it really is more about social status and harsh words, right? Well, Mackenzie Bezos is just saying, hey, I'm not going to just stand by. I'm going to use the billions of dollars I'm connected to to help improve the world. So Mackenzie Bezos is an incredibly important entity uh, in the year 2014, and her connection to Dungeons & Dragons is many kids who play Dungeons & Dragons from 1974 all the way up to 2014, 41 years later, right? Um, you have a situation there where a lot of those kids are prime target for bullies, right? And so uh, Mackenzie Bezos not attempting to help the D&D community is very much helping the D&D community. So she is our, um, our entity for the year 2014. Who is, what is the artifact for the year 2014? Well, the artifact for the year 2014 is the Mike Merle's 2014 Green Box. This is the starter edition box, green box, right, for Dungeons & Dragons. Every single edition of Dungeons & Dragons has had a cardboard box containing a rules pamphlet, a set of dice, some character sheets, uh, for 20 or 30 bucks, you know, for anywhere from 15 to 30 dollars. And actually, this thing could easily be gotten today for even 10 dollars, right? You're good to go. You're ready to go. You're ready to play, right? And these, these basic sets are incredibly important because they reduce the complexity of the game and they invite players and dungeon masters who do not have the tolerance for 700 pages of content to start playing the game. And they're incredibly important. And here is our fifth starter box, right? And in my opinion, the most, the second most important box ever created is the Mike, is the 2014 Mike Merle's Green Box, a starter edition. And that is our artifact for the year 2014. What is the relationship for Dungeons & Dragons in the year 2014? Well, the relationship for Dungeons & Dragons in the year 2014 is Dungeons & Dragons' relationship to heroism, right? To being a hero, all right? Now, this is a widely debated subject within the Dungeons & Dragons community. You cannot th spin around and throw a rock if you've gathered 20, uh, 20 Dungeons & Dragons fans without hitting some schmuck who's going to tell you uh, that you can run an evil campaign, right? It is the holy grail of, ev of like, half the dun only half, not all, half the Dungeon Masters out there. They're convinced that everybody can play a villain, villain and that game is going to be great. Well, in reality, they suck. Those campaigns are the absolute worst, right? And from day one, and for every single edition, Dungeons & Dragons has been built for you to play a hero, not a villain. And this is massively important. The idea is that, yes, you can go in and get treasure, right? Yes, you can go, you, know, you can oppose villains and you can slay them, right? You can put your sword through them, right? But at the end of the day, there is an alignment on every character and that alignment has been there for every single edition of the game. And additionally, those alignments that are available for player characters officially are Lawful good, chaotic good, neutral good, uh, lawful neutral, neutral, and chaotic neutral. And those evil alignments are not available. And the reason why is Dungeons and Dragons at its core for every a single edition of the game calls our player characters to be better people and calls us as human beings to be better people. It is one of the most beautiful aspects of the game. It is truly a wonderful thing. Dungeons and Dragons has a permanent, solid, soldered relationship with heroism, with playing a hero, right? And that's important because many games today, and I'm going to say it, especially in the video game realm, they are definitely serving up an opportunity to be a villain, right? And Dungeons and Dragons, you know, buy it through that pure and simple mechanic of pick your alignment, and guess what? Those those evil alignments at the bottom are not available. Is telling you play a hero, right? And and I really believe that every single PHB DMG MM one e two e three e four e five e they have all called every designer, every dungeon master, every player to be an IRL better person. 
and it is a beautiful, wonderful thing that I will never, ever forget. It's why I'm ride or die Dungeons & Dragons. I will buy every copy of that game until, until they put me in a pine box, right? And I'm really very excited about the 6th edition coming out, and I'm really, really enjoying 5th edition. That is a clear history of the 41st year of Dungeons & Dragons history, 2014. Uh, what's your thoughts on specifically on being a hero? Have you um, Do you think that's one of the better aspects of the game? Or are you on that camp where you want to say, Oh, it's really great playing evil campaigns and it can work, which I think is the lamest call of half the dun dungeon, dungeon masters out there. It's not what the game was designed for. It's lame. But if you feel that way, please feel free to drop it into the comment section below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful day.